Hey everybody, it's Nick again and with another video about Power Pages, of course. Now I do know other things. Now, but one thing I do know a lot about is solutions in the Power Platform and Dataverse. I've been working with solutions since they came out, I think CRM 2011-ish, and they're great because you can add all of your form components, your customizations when you're building Power Apps or extending Dynamics 365. You can even add things like Power Automate flows and even co-pilots to solutions and move them to downstream environments. Now, this was something we could not do with Power Pages only up until about a year ago. And the thing is with solutions and Power Pages, it's great. We can now actually transport our Power Pages configurations down to our test, our QA, our production environments. But there are a few weird things with solutions and Power Pages that you should be aware of. Here are six tips, tricks, gotchas about using solutions and Power Pages that I'm going to share with you now. So let's dive into it. All right, for the very first thing we're going to dive into, I'm now on to the Power Pages homepage. I'm in the solutions section, same as we would. Now, the thing is with solutions, I'm just going to go into one that I created earlier. We, if we're building anything in solutions, and if I'm building a Power App or working in Dynamics 365, this is where I like to start. I like to go into the solutions and then begin to go in and add all my different components. I would just go new, whether it's a new table, um, new automation, or even a new uh, model-driven app or Canvas app. I like to start here because it's all going to be contained in the solution. Now, if I wanted to go in here and add a Power Pages site, that's not there. We cannot add Power Pages sites directly from within the solutions. How we have to do that, of course, it's very much laid out in the uh, docs. We'll just have to go the, um, basically, go through and create it using the uh, template or from Copilot or even from a blank. And then you would create it there. And then once you've created your site, then you would go into the solutions and add it. So we see here, I have already created this tech event. I actually use Copilot to create this site for me. Um, I can go in and edit it. But the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into my solutions. I'm going to open up the one solution I'm working with. And then here I can go add existing. And then once you go add existing, we do see the Power Pages site attribute does show up there in the menu. And I can just select that and I can add that. Now that website is going to add everything, including all of my web pages, my links, uh, my form configurations, pretty much everything I've done to configure and create that site. And that's going to add all of those components into that solution. All right, we've added uh, the solution here. The other thing I wanted to point out to you within Power Pages and Solutions, when I added that website solution, yes, it added all the components. We can see that under site components, um, all the different uh, pages and things like that. They're all going to be listed as site components. The other thing to be aware of, if you are using any kind of forms or lists, the tables attached to those forms or lists. So here I have a couple Dataverse tables. They are also going to be added as part of that solution. This usually is not a problem because we might want to consolidate everything into one solution. But if you are in a practice of using segmented solutions, maybe some for your tables, configurations, others for your automations, others for your Power Pages site, be aware that these tables will show up there. So just you can manage that effectively just by removing those tables, making sure they're in the other solution, or it's actually okay if they're in both, if that's okay with you. Now, the third tip I want to talk to you about is if I'm in my design studio here, I'm adding new things like new web pages. Um, new forms, new list in a web page. Or if I go into the Power Pages management app and I start adding features here, which is something a lot of people I know do, or even if we do it in Visual Studio, or if I'm adding new things into within Visual Studio, and that's with the Visual Studio desktop where we can create new things, these things will not get added to the solution or to a solution automatically. They will get make it to the default solution, but they won't necessarily make it to the solution where you've already added that website. So that's a problem. So if you forget to do this and you deploy your website to a downstream environment, you're gonna find you're gonna be missing some items because they weren't added. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. First off, we're gonna set the preferred solution. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm actually in the Power Apps Maker here, not the Power Pages homepage. This is where we can set the preferred solution. So you can just go up here, you can set whichever solution you want. Uh, by default, it is just putting it to the common, uh, common data service solution or you could just pick your solution here and do the set preferred solution. I've already done that, that's why it's grayed out. This is important because this way, anytime
anytime you create new Power Pages assets using any of those tools I just talked about, they'll automatically be added to that solution. And ideally, that would be the same solution that you've added your website to. So everything will be packaged up nicely. Just something just to be aware of. Now, for some reason, if you're not using a preferred solution or you actually want your website components to be in a different solution, what you can do there, you can go into your solution, go into the site, click on the little ellipse, go into the advanced, and add those required objects, those required objects, and do this after you've done a bunch of development. So what that will do, it will go out and find those components in the default solution and bring those in underneath that particular website um, within the solution that you want. So this is something you might wanna do before a deployment or whatever on a daily basis. Um, it's just a good habit to get into. Again, I prefer the preferred solution method, but this is one another way to make sure that all of those assets do get added to the solution because if you don't, like I said, when you go to a downstream environment, you're gonna find you're gonna be missing things. The other way to do this too, which uh, is it's not a bad trick either, is you can just simply just remove the um, the whole entire website from the solution and then re-add it. When you re-add it, it will go out and collect all of those components and make sure it's all complete when you bring it in. That's a little bit extreme and I also wanna make sure you don't hit this delete from this environment where you'll delete your entire website. Um, so again, preferred solution is the preferred method, but there are other ways as well just to make sure you get those assets into your solution. All right, the next thing to be aware about solutions, if you go into the data workspace, now this is a feature that's been there for a while to create Dataverse tables and views and forms that you can use for your web pages. There is this little gear icon here where you can set your solution now. It is set to the common data service default solution. We can set that to anything. I'm gonna set that to my Nordic Summit solution. Now this, setting the solution here will only be for when you're creating tables, views, and forms. It will get added to that solution, of course, they'll get added to the preferred solution as well. But this way, by pointing it to that solution, that's gonna be using that particular publisher and everything, but it's only for Dataverse uh, basic components. So things like web pages or the web forms or the lists, remember lists and views are slightly different things. They'll actually not be in this particular solution. So just be aware of that I know it is a little bit confusing, but this was sort of developed before the enhanced data model um, and before some of these things. So that's why those things are there. So again, it's just good to be aware of that when you're working with solutions with Power Pages. All right, so you've added everything to your solution, you've deployed it either manually or using pipelines or even using Azure DevOps, and it's here, your downstream environment, your target environment, and you're like, where? Like, it's part of the solution. You can even look in the solution, you can see the site, you're wondering where the heck is your site now? It does not, the very first time you deploy it to a target environment, it is not gonna be active. You have to go into your inactive sites and there you're gonna see it. And there you have to hit reactivate and then go basically sort of through the provisioning process, but it will use the metadata that you've brought over. So once that's ready to go, you'll deploy that and then your site's gonna be deployed. And you only need to do this once. Going forward, every time you bring in your solution, it will update your target environment and you'll be good to go. So again, just another one of those little things you need to be aware of when working with solutions. It's a little bit different than the rest of the Power Platform. You know, when you create a model-driven app or Canvas app, it's, you know, you know, usually ready to go in your target environment. Power Pages, first time you need to reactivate your site. All right, this is a real gotcha uh, when using solutions, and it's kind of a weakness of solutions in Power Pages right now, I find. What happens is if you have a bunch of site settings that are very unique to your particular site, I'm thinking things like the external identity providers. If you've configured it to go to Azure B2C or to Okta or to the Entra, uh, the new Entra external identities, those types of things, of course, they're very specific to that particular site because there's the callback URLs. External identities, I have all other videos on that. You can check those out. These types of things, when you've set that, that will create something called site settings or update site settings. When you move these through a solutions, they're going to overwrite your target environment. So if you already have your external, external identity set up there, it could potentially mess that up. Now there are ways for naming conventions in terms of some of these site settings, but sometimes these things will get overwritten. Currently, the only way to do that is in your target environment, you're going to have to go in and manually fix these. That's also gonna add an unmanaged layer, which we also don't want, but 
it's kind of unfortunate right now. I know Microsoft is working on this. They're aware of the problem. Hopefully we're going to get an answer soon. I really don't know. Um, as soon as I do know, I will share that. But for now, you're going to have to do that. Now on an ongoing basis, when you're using pipelines and automation, it becomes to be a real pain. So there are ways using Power Automate and pipelines. That's what I'm using now in some projects where as soon as the pipeline has successfully deployed, it will run a Power Automate flow and update those site setting values. Power Page doesn't use things like environment variables yet. Maybe they will. Maybe that'd be the solution. I don't know. Hopefully that will come. But again, that is something major to be aware of. Um, if it's not going to be a problem solved anytime soon, I will make another video or some content on that just to kind of show you our workarounds right now, essentially. All right. So those are, I think, uh, five or six different things to be aware of when using solutions with Power Pages in the Power Platform. Like I said, overall, I really think this is a great thing for Power Pages. It really kind of brings it into the entire Power Platform. Um, has been out for a while, so that's why these things are beginning to bubble up, but it's not perfect. There's things you just need to be aware of, things that work a little bit different than regular Power Apps or Power Automate. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you on the next one.